Hello, I'm Sagar Loniel, and I'm here with Blood Cancers Today, and we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of recent data on CAR T cells and how to incorporate them into your daily practice. I'm joined by two esteemed colleagues. My name is Nupur Rajay. I work at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, and I'm really excited to be talking about the T-cell-directed therapies in multiple myeloma today. And I'm Karina Patel. I'm an associate professor at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, and CAR-T is my favorite thing. I'm not biased at all, so thank you for inviting me. <laughs> You've got a patient, generic patient coming in, and you're trying to make a decision on T-cell engager versus CAR-T. What's the calculus that's going on in your mind? You know, although I'm saying that we would give CAR T cells to everybody, I think one has to really understand and appreciate the logistics of uh, putting a patient through CAR T cells. It is a commitment. They are staying close to where uh, we work. They have to have somebody with them for that first one month. And those are things, if a patient is, is not able to do all of that, then doing the T-cell engager in that patient is perfectly fine. As of right now, you know, we're trying to move T-cell engagers to the outpatient, but we're still doing the first step up dosing inpatient, and then they get it outpatient. But at least they don't have all of these other restrictions which CAR T-cells uh, do have. So I think CAR T-cells, are, as you pointed out earlier, they're intensive up front. Once you're done with a couple months, then you're able to, and it depends on where people are in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to take all of these things into account before making those decisions. Yeah, and I would say that my patients who need something very soon, I know are probably not going to make it to cells. And if I have something, if I have a drug I haven't used that I think is going to, they're going to respond mm -hmm. to while I wait, then maybe I'll still do CAR-T if I have a slot for them. But if I don't, if they've used everything and I think I'd have to use hypercytoxin to get their disease controlled, I'm doing a bispecific then. I don't want them to not get BCMA um, therapy because I right. do think every patient deserves that chance. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully, I know this is something you do sometimes is, well, then maybe you could do CAR-T after mm -hmm. that, right? Um, again, we need, to, we need a lot more data in terms of what happens to the T cells, et cetera. But my goal is to get that patient something um, mm -hmm. and, and they could have a great response with the, the bispecifics too. Yeah, so let's let's um, let's talk a little bit about that question around bridging, or not just bridging, because I think of bridging as what you do between apheresis and infusion, but sort of pre-apheresis, pre-bridging. Um, are there things you do or don't want to use in that context, and um, sort of how do you approach it given you know a perfect world? Yeah, don't use drugs like bendamustine for sure. <laughs> Um, so alkylate, don't try and collect your T-cells very close to, say, high-dose chemotherapy, for example, melflan, uh, because these are really toxic to your lymphocytes as well. And you're re even if you're able to collect um, enough lymphocytes, they're not going to be that functional. Um, outside of that, we've used low-dose cytoxin. We've used everything else. Uh, drugs like deratumumab, you know, give them a couple of weeks off. I haven't done any more than that. Uh, but beyond traditional chemotherapy, we can use anything. We're a lot less restricted in what we can use for bridging therapy compared to some of the clinical trials, right? right? So there's a lot more room to try other stuff. Yeah, so I agree. I think before apheresis, I tried to use imids, other kind of mm -hmm. modulatory drugs. Right. We've right. had some clinical trials with things like IL-15 that I know is supposed to, you know, make your, your T cells better. So I try to do that. Um, and, and the things that don't kill your T cells, but then after, it really depends on the patient. Um, and we do have some real world data where bridging, if you respond to bridging, you're gonna do much better, um, of course. Um, and those patients really were, as Nupur said, we, we don't have restrictions as we do on clinical trials, mm -hmm. um, which lets us use whatever we want. Um, but again, these are really relapsed refractory patients. So a lot of times, even the newer therapies just don't work for them. Um, but that's where I end up using things like higher dose cytoxin if someone has a lot of disease burden. Um, but I think the, the big takeaway for that is as long as you're not going to increase their risk of infection or cytopenia right. or the cell infusion, then, then that's okay. But um, those patients tend to have more infections you know, after the CAR-T, mm -hmm. so you just have to watch them um, a little bit more closely.